It's a reality hidden beneath our feet. Kenya's soil, once teeming with life, is now losing its ability to support crops. Degraded, eroded, overworked. The numbers are shocking, but what's more concerning is the domino effect it has on food production, nutrition and the livelihoods of millions. It's quite sad as we sit here that uh, 40% of our arable land in, uh, in East Africa is degraded and in Kenya we continue to lose um, about uh, 26 uh, uh, tons of our soil through degradation. So what's killing Kenya's soil? According to the Soil Atlas Kenya edition by the Henrich Ball Foundation, decades of intensive farming fueled by excessive use of synthetic fertilizers have stripped the land of essential nutrients and beneficial microorganisms. The results, decreasing crop yields. In Kenya's maize basket, Transnzoia, yields have plummeted from 60 bags per acre to just 15 to 20 bags. And we still continue pumping fertilizer. So what is this saying? Is that our soil's resilience has been compromised and we will continue pumping this kind of uh, fertilizer but with no significant change in the production of, uh, of, our, of, of, our, of our crops. The damage runs deeper. The continuous use of nitrogen and phosphorus-based fertilizer is weakening soil biology, affecting microbial life that is essential for healthy crops. Basket area that we need to really, really focus on our soils. Continued pumping of nitrogen-based and phosphorus-based fertilizers is messing the resilience of this soil, especially the growth of uh, the microbiology of this kind of uh, soils in the 20% area that is uh, purely arable. And it will need a shift whereby we need to balance on three things that we look at soil health. One, we are talking about the structure of the soil, that's the physical of the soil. Looking also at the biology of the soil, and more so what we have been focusing all through on the nutrition element or that the soil provides to our crops. And it's not just the highlands that are at risk. Kenya's arid and semi-arid lands, which make up 80% of the country, are suffering from another crisis, salinity. As irrigation expands in dry regions, the soil is turning salty, reducing its ability to support crops. These soils, as we continue even irrigating the ones that are arid and semi-arid areas, because of the lack of proper agronomic practices, they are, send, they are tending to be saline. And our atlas, actually the soil atlas mentions that 40% of our land is becoming saline. So actually we continue going lower in terms of uh, the productivity ability of these soils. But the consequences, Kenya is becoming food insecure not just from low production, but from a lack of nutrients in the food we eat. Farmers have no choice but to fortify food artificially because the soil can no longer provide vital minerals like zinc and copper. So what went wrong? Experts trace the problem back to colonial farming systems that prioritized cash crops over sustainable, diverse agriculture you'll find that they used to keep a lot of livestock that were diverse and also the kind of cultivation was done was very diverse. Talk about grains, talk about like I've said even if it's uh, like type of bananas were being put. But now, sorry, let me start and say this is what characterized that time about food security. But coming to the colonial government, we started having what we call cash crops. You'll hear about sugarcane, you'll hear about maize. This is wheat belt, this is coffee belt, this is tea zone belt. That has messed the diversity within our farms. Today, hunger is the new colonizer. Millions of Kenyans are eating just one meal a day, not because there isn't food, but because the food lacks nutritional diversity. You're looking at the history of colonization, we are, big, we are all now colonized by hunger. This is what even we call silent hunger whereby you are taking one meal in terms of diversity of macronutrients that is gone, has been eroded. But all hope is not lost. The Soil Atlas report highlights solutions that could restore Kenya's soils. At the heart of this solution is agroecology, a return to organic farming, crop rotation and the natural soil regeneration. One region is already leading the way. 
I want to give you an example of Western Kenya, which I'm usually proud of, and I really request them to continue sustaining their practices that are quite diverse, whereby you will see them occupying every layer within their farm, from the below ground to upper, so diverse. You go on, you'll find uh, the, 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 the dicots, these are the beans, even the climbers are there, they'll do cereals, they'll do bananas, they'll do agroforestry. This kind of mixed farming is what we are saying can be able to enhance the both below ground and above ground biology of the soil. Experts agree the future of Kenya's food security lies in soil regeneration, not just more fertilizer. Long-term studies by Caldro show that more sustainable solution isn't synthetic fertilizers alone, but a blend of organic and synthetic practices. Calro has been able to has been doing long-term experiments at over 50 years. And they have come to realize that the three kind of options that are there, you can either go directly to use of synthetic fertilizer, you can do a, a mix of synthetic fertilizer and uh, the organics and all organics alone. In the short run, what they have realized is that the mixture of synthetic and organics can help resolve the problem. But at the long run, when you go to the organic inputs, in terms of the practices and the input that you provide uh, for fertilization of the soil, takes care of the three elements I mentioned of the soil health. The structure of the soil will be improved. The soil because of the organic matter that is there. The biology of the soil, the nematodes, the fungi, the bacteria, name it, are, are enriched in that soil. If Kenya is to reverse soil degradation, Experts say policy changes are urgently needed. The government must shift from measuring food security in terms of staple food availability to nutritional diversity and sustainable soil management. We need to change even in our policies as a government, as institutions, whereby we should not measure food security based on the staple food. We should measure food security based on the diversity. Because, for example, you look at one bag of 90 kilos of maize and I have that one bag of, div of diverse kind of foods, we'll be getting a lot of nutritional needs will be met. Where only this one, we are getting uh, a one bag kind of one crop, let's say of maize, that is not nutrient dense. So, what's next for Kenya's soil? The choice is clear either continue depleting our soils and fighting a losing battle with fertilizers or embrace regenerative farming practices that restore the land for generations to come. For Voice of Nature, I'm David Kagina.